The Association of African Universities, AAU, Africa's apex higher education organization, invites stakeholders to its 15th quadriennial general conference from 5th to the 8th of July 2021. The theme is the future of African higher education. The conference will be held virtually and hosted by the government of Ghana and the six sub-teams as follows. Sub-team 1. The future of African higher education post-COVID-19. Sub-team 2. Contributions of African higher education institutions to addressing the challenges linked to the COVID-19 pandemic. Sub-team 3. Contributions of African higher education institutions in achieving sustainable development goals. Sub-team 4. Funded of African higher education institutions in the face of unpredictable economy. Sub team 5. Mainstreaming e learning and the digital divide. Sub team 6. Contributions of the diaspora to African higher education. Expert participants include ministries of higher education, academics, researchers and research organizations, regional economic communities, regional educational bodies like IUCEA, CAMES, and SARUWA the organized private sector and captains of industry, development partners and other education stakeholders. The AAU's 15th Quadrennial General Conference is here. To register, kindly go to the link below and for further inquiries, please visit the website www.event.aau.org slash gencon or send an email to secgen at aau.org and copy info at aau.org. AAU the voice of higher education in Africa. L'Association des Universités Africaines, AEA, l'Organisation Fertière de l'Enseignement Supérieur en Afrique, invite toutes les parties prenantes à sa 15e conférence générale quadrinale qui se tiendra du 5 au 8 juillet 2021. Le thème de cette conférence est l'avenir de l'enseignement supérieur africain. La conférence se tiendra victuellement et ce sera accueillie par le gouvernement du Ghana. Elle comprend les six sous-thèmes principaux suivants. Sous-thème 1, l'avenir de l'enseignement supérieur africain après la COVID-19. Sous-thème 2, contribution des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain pour le relever des défis liés à la pandémie COVID-19. Sous-thème 3, Contribution des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain à la réalisation des objectifs de développement durable. Sous thème 4, financement des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain face à une économie imprévisible. Sous thème 5, intégration de l'apprentissage en ligne et de la facture numérique. Sous thème 6, contribution de la diaspora à l'enseignement supérieur africain. Les participants attendus comprenant entre autres les ministères de l'enseignement supérieur, des universitaires, les chercheurs et organismes de recherche en Afrique et au-delà, les organismes éducatifs régionaux comme la IUCEA, la CAMES, la Sarwa, le secteur privé organisé et les chefs d'industrie, les partenaires de développement, agences et organisations internationales et d'autres acteurs de l'éducation. La 15e conférence générale quadrina de l'AUALA. Pour vous inscrire et participer, veuillez visiter la tinyurl.com bar AAUGC 2021 et pour plus d'informations sur la conférence, veuillez visiter le site web event.aau.org bar GenCon ou envoyez un courriel à secgen.aau.org et copiez info.aau.org. L'AUA, la voie de l'enseignement supérieur en Afrique.
the Association of African Universities, AAU, Africa's apex higher education organization, invites stakeholders to its 15th quadriennial general conference from 5th to the 8th of July 2021. The theme is the future of African higher education. The conference will be held virtually and hosted by the government of Ghana and the six sub-teams as follows. Sub-team 1. The future of African higher education post-COVID-19. Sub-team 2. Contributions of African higher education institutions to addressing the challenges linked to the COVID-19 pandemic. Sub-team 3. Contributions of African higher education institutions in achieving sustainable development goals. Sub-team 4. Funding of African higher education institutions in the face of unpredictable economy. Sub-team 5. Mainstreaming e-learning and the digital divide. Sub-team 6. Contributions of the diaspora to African higher education. Expected participants include ministries of higher education, academics, researchers and research organizations, regional economic communities, regional educational bodies like IUCEA, CAMIS and SARUWA, the organized private sector and captains of industry, development partners and other education stakeholders. The AAU's 15th Quadrennial General Conference is here. To register, kindly go to the link below and for further inquiries, please visit the website www.event.aau.org slash GenCon or send an email to secgen at aau.org and copy info at aau.org. AAU, the voice of higher education in Africa. L'Association des Universités Africaines, AUA, l'Organisation Fertière de l'Enseignement Supérieur en Afrique, invite toutes les parties prenantes à sa 15e conférence générale quadrinale qui se tiendra du 5 au 8 juillet 2021. Le thème de cette conférence est l'avenir de l'enseignement supérieur africain. La conférence se tiendra victuellement et se sera accueillie par le gouvernement du Ghana. Elle comprend les six sous-thèmes principaux suivants. Sous-thème 1, l'avenir de l'enseignement supérieur africain après la COVID-19. Sous-thème 2, contribution des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain pour le relevé des défis liés à la pandémie COVID-19. Sous-thème 3, contribution des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain à la réalisation des objectifs de développement durable. Sous-thème 4, Financement des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain face à une économie imprévisible. Ce thème 5, intégration de l'apprentissage en ligne et de la facture numérique. Ce thème 6, contribution de la diaspora à l'enseignement supérieur africain. Les participants attendus comprenant entre autres les ministères de l'enseignement supérieur, des universitaires, les chercheurs et organismes de recherche en Afrique et au-delà, les organismes éducatifs régionaux comme la IUCEA, la CAMES, la SARUA, le secteur privé organisé et les chefs d'industrie, les partenaires de développement, agences et organisations internationales et d'autres acteurs de l'éducation. La 15e conférence générale quadrina de l'AUALA. Pour vous inscrire et participer, veuillez visiter la tinyurl.com barre AAUGC 2021. Et pour plus d'informations sur la conférence, veuillez visiter le site web event.aau.org bar GenCon ou envoyez un courriel à secgen.aau.org et copiez info.aau.org. La UA, la voix de l'enseignement supérieur en Afrique.
The Association of African Universities, AAU, Africa's apex higher education organization, invites stakeholders to its 15th quadriennial general conference from 5th to the 8th of July 2021. The theme is the future of African higher education. The conference will be held virtually and hosted by the government of Ghana and the six sub-teams as follows. Sub-team 1. The future of African higher education post-COVID-19. Sub-team 2. Contributions of African higher education institutions to addressing the challenges linked to the COVID-19 pandemic. Sub-team 3. Contributions of African higher education institutions in achieving sustainable development goals. Sub-team 4. Funding of African higher education institutions in the face of unpredictable economy. Sub-team 5. Mainstreaming e-learning and the digital divide. Sub-team 6. Contributions of the diaspora to African higher education. Expert participants include ministries of higher education, academics, researchers and research organizations, regional economic communities, regional educational bodies like IUCEA, CAMES and SARUWA, the organized private sector and captains of industry, development partners and other education stakeholders. The AAU's 15th Quadrennial General Conference is here. To register, kindly go to the link below and for further inquiries, please visit the website www.event.aau.org slash gencon or send an email to secgen at aau.org and copy info at aau.org. AAU, the voice of higher education in Africa. L'Association des Universités Africaines, AUA, l'Organisation Fertière de l'Enseignement Supérieur en Afrique, Invite toutes les parties prenantes à sa 15e conférence générale quadrinale qui se tiendra du 5 au 8 juillet 2021. Le thème de cette conférence est l'avenir de l'enseignement supérieur africain. La conférence se tiendra victuellement et se sera accueillie par le gouvernement du Ghana. Elle comprend les six sous-thèmes principaux suivants. Sous-thème 1, l'avenir de l'enseignement supérieur africain après la COVID-19. Sous-thème 2, contribution des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain pour le relevé des défis liés à la pandémie COVID-19. Sous-thème 3, contribution des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain à la réalisation des objectifs de développement durable. Sous-thème 4, Financement des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain face à une économie imprévisible. Sous thème 5, intégration de l'apprentissage en ligne et de la facture numérique. Sous thème 6, contribution de la diaspora à l'enseignement supérieur africain. Les participants attendus comprenant entre autres les ministères de l'enseignement supérieur, des universitaires, les chercheurs et organismes de recherche en Afrique et au-delà, les organismes éducatifs régionaux comme la IUCEA, la CAMES, la SARWA, le secteur privé organisé et les chefs d'industrie, les partenaires de développement, agences et organisations internationales et d'autres acteurs de l'éducation. La 15e conférence générale quadrina de l'AUALA. Pour vous inscrire et participer, veuillez visiter la tinyurl.com bar AAUGC 2021. Et pour plus d'informations sur la conférence, veuillez visiter le site web event.aau.org bar GenCon ou envoyez un courriel à secgen.aau.org et copiez info.aau.org. La UA, la voix de l'enseignement supérieur en Afrique.
The Association of African Universities, AAU, Africa's apex higher education organization, invites stakeholders to its 15th quadriennial general conference from 5th to the 8th of July 2021. The theme is the future of African higher education. The conference will be held virtually and hosted by the government of Ghana and the six sub teams as follows. Sub team 1 The future of African higher education post COVID 19. Sub team 2 Contributions of African higher education institutions to addressing the challenges linked to the COVID 19 pandemic. Sub team 3 Contributions of African higher education institutions in achieving sustainable development goals. Sub team 4 Funding of African higher education institutions in the face of unpredictable economy. Sub team 5 Mainstreaming e learning and the digital divide. Sub team 6 Contributions of the diaspora to African higher education. Expert participants include ministries of higher education, academics, researchers and research organizations, regional economic communities, regional educational bodies like IUCA, CAMIS, and SARUWA, the organized private sector and captains of industry, development partners, and other education stakeholders. The AAU's 15th Quadrennial General Conference is here. To register, kindly go to the link below. And for further inquiries, please visit the website www.event.aau.org slash GenCon or send an email to setgen at aau.org and copy info at aau.org. AAU, the voice of higher education in Africa. L'Association des Universités Africaines, AUA, l'Organisation Fertière de l'Enseignement Supérieur en Afrique, Invite toutes les parties prenantes à sa 15e conférence générale quadrinale qui se tiendra du 5 au 8 juillet 2021. Le thème de cette conférence est l'avenir de l'enseignement supérieur africain. La conférence se tiendra victuellement et se sera accueillie par le gouvernement du Ghana. Elle comprend les six sous-thèmes principaux suivants. Sous-thème 1, l'avenir de l'enseignement supérieur africain après la COVID-19. Sous-thème 2, contribution des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain pour le relever des défis liés à la pandémie COVID-19. Sous-thème 3, contribution des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain à la réalisation des objectifs de développement durable. Sous-thème 4, Financement des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain face à une économie imprévisible. Sous thème 5, intégration de l'apprentissage en ligne et de la facture numérique. Sous thème 6, contribution de la diaspora à l'enseignement supérieur africain. Les participants attendus comprenant entre autres les ministères de l'enseignement supérieur, des universitaires, les chercheurs et organismes de recherche en Afrique et au-delà, les organismes éducatifs régionaux comme la IUCEA, la CAMES, la SARWA, le secteur privé organisé et les chefs d'industrie, les partenaires de développement, agences et organismes internationale et d'autres acteurs de l'éducation. La 15e conférence générale quadrina de l'AUALA. Pour vous inscrire et participer, veuillez visiter la tinyurl.com barre AAUGC 2021 et pour plus d'informations sur la conférence, veuillez visiter le site web event.aau.org bar GenCon ou envoyez un courriel à secgen.aau.org et copiez info.aau.org. L'AUA, la voie de l'enseignement supérieur en Afrique.
the Association of African Universities, AAU, Africa's Apex. Focus on business growth, career advancement, and the financial independence of grassroots women. Encouraging Nigerian business women to diversify into agriculture. Establishment of Abenstone Microfinance Bank. La The Association of African Universities, AAU, Africa's Apex Higher Education Organization, invites stakeholders to its 15th quadriennial General Conference from 5th to the 8th of July 2021. The theme is the future of African higher education. The conference will be held virtually and hosted by the government of Ghana and the six sub-teams as follows. Sub-team 1, the future of African higher education post-COVID-19. Sub-team 2, contributions of African higher education institutions to addressing the challenges linked to the COVID-19 pandemic. Sub-team 3, contributions of African higher education institutions in achieving sustainable development goals. Sub-team 4, funding of African higher education institutions in the face of unpredictable economy. Sub-team 5, mainstreaming e-learning and the digital divide. Sub-team 6, contributions of the diaspora to African higher education. Expected participants include ministries of higher education, academics, researchers and research organizations, regional economic communities, regional educational bodies like IUCEA, CAMES, and SARUWA, the organized private sector and captains of industry, development partners and other education stakeholders. The AAU's 15th Quadrennial General Conference is here. To register, kindly go to the link below and for further inquiries, please visit the website www.event.aau.org slash gencon or send an email to secgen at aau.org and copy info at aau.org. AAU, the voice of higher education in Africa. L'Association des Universités Africaines, AUA, l'Organisation Fertière de l'Enseignement Supérieur en Afrique, Invite toutes les parties prenantes à sa 15e conférence générale quadrinale qui se tiendra du 5 au 8 juillet 2021. Le thème de cette conférence est l'avenir de l'enseignement supérieur africain. La conférence se tiendra victuellement et se sera accueillie par le gouvernement du Ghana. Elle comprend les six sous-thèmes principaux suivants. Sous-thème 1, l'avenir de l'enseignement supérieur africain après la COVID-19. Sous-thème 2, contribution des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain pour le relever des défis liés à la pandémie COVID-19. Sous-thème 3, contribution des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain à la réalisation des objectifs de développement durable. Sous-thème 4, Financement des établissements d'enseignement supérieur africain face à une économie imprévisible. Sous thème 5, intégration de l'apprentissage en ligne et de la facture numérique. Sous thème 6, contribution de la diaspora à l'enseignement supérieur africain. Les participants attendus comprenant entre autres les ministères de l'enseignement supérieur, des universitaires, les chercheurs et organismes de recherche en Afrique et au-delà, les organismes éducatifs régionaux comme la IUCEA, la CAMES, la SARWA, le secteur privé organisé et les chefs d'industrie, les partenaires de développement, agences et organisations internationales et d'autres acteurs de l'éducation. La 15e conférence générale quadrina de l'AUALA. Pour vous inscrire et participer, 
Veuillez visiter la tinyurl.com bar AAUGC 2021. Et pour plus d'informations sur la conférence, veuillez visiter le site web event.aau.org bar GenCon ou envoyez un courriel à secgen.aau.org et copiez info.aau.org. La UA, la voie de l'enseignement supérieur en Afrique. Hello, my name is Irene Kilia. I am Tanzanian. Uh, the African Free Trade Agreement is such an amazing tool because for the first time ever, it's giving Africans a platform that will allow to increase access to market, which is a big thing. When we look at where the continent is at today, where Africa trades at 11%, between Africa, this is intra-Africa trade, we still have a long way to go. And there has been many challenges that, you know, now with African Free Trade Agreement, we are looking or we are hoping to see a major shift. Je suis Madame Isimatu Ishola, Béninoise, résidant au Sénégal. Je m'investis pleinement dans l'accompagnement des femmes en vue de leur autonomisation. Et à ce titre, Je suis vice-présidente du réseau entrepreneurial des femmes africaines, RIFA Sénégal, où je suis chargée du leadership et du développement durable. Et je pense que la réussite de l'ASLECAF ne peut se faire sans une forte implication des femmes. Vive la journée. I think unless women are involved, there will not be success in our endeavors. Thank you. I'm the founder and CEO of Millennium Immobilier, which is a construction uh, and um, development company specializing in green building and material production. Alors, j'espère aussi que l'ASLECAF nous permettra pour les femmes qui sont dans cette industrie un peu dite masculine, et que j'espère qu'elle nous permettra de, de, de grandir. I hope. The interpreters uh, regret the sound quality is too poor to be able to interpret properly for you. We can barely hear à trouver une place et avec notre réseau panafricain que nous développons, je pense que nous pourrons avoir des résultats. Good day, my name is Princess Laya Okewo. Happy International Women's Day. I'm the Managing Director, Chief Executive of FAE Limited, the largest envelope manufacturer in Africa. The innovation that I brought into the country is uh, Tamper-proof envelopes, and I also have the RFID that will protect all your ATM cards. I encourage my fellow women that um, what a man can do, a woman can do thrives. We are the fastest moving train now, and we need to encourage each other that we should all come in on board to become industrialists. I wish myself. And my fellow women, happy International Women's Day. Thank you. Hello, my name is Claire Matukanya Daka, and I am a data scientist at Adalab Africa, as well as a co founder and head of 
AI at the AI Center of Excellence, also known as AIC. That means only les femmes entrepreneurs et femmes d'affaires de la CDAO. Euh, là, je salue ici l'initiative. I would like to salute this initiative. When we talk about cross-border trade, since we shall be reducing tariff and non-tariff barriers, it will make it possible for women to export their goods, to be more open to external trade, and not to have to face the type of harassment and other obstacles that they face at the border. It will mean that they can carry, they can do their trade in a much more formal way. If I could describe it as such, there will be the rules that are respected and they need to be educated about these rules and we can raise awareness so that they are fully aware of all the advantages of AFCFTA. And I am the managing director and founder of uh, Crown Nature's Nigeria. Uh, Crown Nature's Nigeria is a large scale textile apparel manufacturing company, providing uh, apparel from Nigeria and servicing the local market. Since uh, we began this operation, we've engaged a lot of women, we have engaged women who have skill and women without skill and I've actually taught them the skill and uh, uh, gamefully employed them. Uh, African continental free trade area uh, as actually we I believe would help uh, uh, women businesses to, to strive within Africa and because that enables us to take our market from our local market into the continent uh, market where we can actually uh, be able to sell more of what we produce and what we sell and that definitely will strengthen women's businesses and will enable us to share ideas with other women within the uh, uh, African sub-region. This definitely we believe will be a good uh, development for uh, African women and women in general. Bonjour, je m'appelle Karine Florette-Téné, je suis Camerounaise. Hello, I am from Cameroon. Now, how do I expect to share in the AFCFTA? Well, first of all, to be a part of it as quickly as possible, to be amongst those who are promoting inter-African trade through a significant reduction in the barriers that are obstacles to this trade. Secondly, making it possible for self-empowerment and the empowerment of women. The interpreter apologizes, there's music in the background. This is an extremely impossible exercise. Good day, my name is Mantra Sankoloba, the CEO of Botswana Exporters and Manufacturers Association. In short, it's uh, called FEMA. I'm also the aesthetic women in business uh, country uh, head for the Botswana chapter. We are looking forward to ensuring that uh, we also are part and parcel of ensuring that uh, there is maximum benefits from the FCFTA for women in Africa because we have what it takes and there is a lot of potential. So we do believe that the FCFTA provision for women uh, could take us a long way as African women to um, position ourselves much better, to trade better, to even take leadership positions that we believe could be very much effective to ensure that Africa um, develops itself, Africa remains sustain, sustainable and uh, we reach maximum uh, trade benefits that we can as, as, as Africa. It is never too late to make a healthy reservation. My name is Polino Kubasu, the CEO and founder of Azari Foods. We also work closely with the female farmers uh, to ensure that good agricultural practices and sustainable production and uh, consumption practices are adhered to. The Africa continental free trade area uh, provides a larger playing field within the, uh, the intra-Africa market space 
where we get more access to, uh, to customers who can experience the sweetness produced by our soil through blending in uh, the different products, vegetables and fruits from the different countries. We are able to access more suppliers. We are able to access more, uh, more partners, uh, development partners that we can grow with. And, uh, and build the GDP um, of Kenya. I encourage all women to choose to challenge in their areas of influence. My name is Rose Rono, and I'm an international trade professional based in Nairobi, Kenya. Some of my achievements include implementation of the single window system, implementation of the World Trade Organization Trade Facilitation Agreement, and the Information for Trade Portal in Kenya. In terms of leveraging on the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, the role that I play is on capacity building for women and SMEs, and also automation of international trade processes to ensure the reduction of uh, non-tariff barriers. I want to wish you a happy International Women's Day 2021. I work très heureuse d'entendre qu'il y a une plateforme de commerce pour la femme, une plateforme qui, une plateforme qui valorise, qui aide la femme dans son avancée. Et déjà, j'espère vraiment euh, m'y retrouver. Vraiment que cette plateforme m'aidera à résoudre les problèmes que je rencontre quotidiennement sur le terrain et que cette plateforme m'aidera à évoluer. I am Mrs. Daphne Chalholma, the chairperson of Sealing Pilot 2. Happy International Women's Day, Africa. The African Continental Free Trade Area being an, a very novel project has become the greatest achievement for us in the 21st century in Africa. In the Protocol on Trade in Services states that state parties are mandated to improve the export capacity of both formal and informal sector with particular attention to micro, small and medium enterprises women and youth service suppliers. This underscores the essence of gender parity and underscores the meaningfulness and inclusiveness of women in the continental free trade area. For me, for Norusho, I am the Secretary General of the African Ship Owners Association. The trade that is needed to acquire vessels is what the IFCTA is bringing on board. Nobody buys ships to park. There's no parking space for ships. We need trade. We need cargo to be able to buy ships and more ships by Africans. Therefore, for the African ship owner, AFCTA is a great, great, great initiative and should be supported by all. For women in particular, what does it do for us? Oh, it makes sure that there are more vessels for our female seafarers to come on board and have their sea time. Hi, my name is Paja Beruke. I am a German electrical engineer by profession. I'm in Nigeria, but I'm based in the Republic of Benin. 20 years ago, we started a company called Institutes Group, which is an ICT company. Um, a few years back, we had two projects. The first one was called Equity, which was to bring together the ICT companies in the West African zone. The second one was also called OAWE, which was to bring together the business women in the West African countries also. It was a time to share ideas, to find out ways to exchange products and services. 
and there was a, a lot of B2B meetings. It was a very successful fruitful program. And then when I heard about the AFC FTA program, it was very interesting to know that yes, this is expanding to the African region where business people can move within the countries, exchange products, exchange services without being hindered in any way. My name is Ed Irene Nakaliango and I'm the founder of ABC Energy Global, a company based in Uganda. We offer a wide range of business support services to our clients and our slogan is very simple, your destiny, our purpose, which speaks volumes in relation to our targeted approach to each client. We do whatever we do innovatively, and that is led by a team of young purposeful driven individuals. As a company, we are ready to partake of the opportunities in the continent of the trade area. We would like to call on partners to visit our website, elicitenergyglobal.com, to see how best to work with us. We believe that synergies are critical in order to harness the opportunities in the continent of the trade area. Hi, my name is John Miano. I am a director of Miyamu Properties Limited, a real estate company here in Kenya. I'm also a member of uh, OWIT uh, in Kenya, Organization of Women in International Trade. I have gone through seminars through OWIT, I've gone through uh, development uh, courses through OWIT, and I've been able to get partnership with a, a, a big company here in Kenya called Centum Group, where we do their property sales and marketing. AFCTA is an open door in the diaspora for us. Um, entrepreneurship is a journey. Just take the first step. Don't be afraid. Thank you. Chancellor Cooper, you may take over, and as you do that, just to uh, let our uh, participants know that since this is a virtual uh, summit, uh, it is part of our normal exchange when we have uh, a summit to share details, uh, to, uh, business cards, and so forth. So please make use of the um, chat platform to do that uh, if you want to um, exchange details with uh, fellow participants just for you to know that the chat line is for that uh, with that um, councillor cooper please you may take over thank you sir thank you dr sam and let me say how delightful it is to be with all of us this morning and this afternoon depending on where on the globe we are to discuss this very important topic this session on investment paradigm shifts for sustainable transformation and development is key to the implementation of a changed circumstance that will improve the investment climate in our various countries. Now, the organizers have given us certain questions to be addressed. But all of these questions, as I, and I will read them out, fall under a threshold overarching theme. And that overarching theme is, what do we see from a practical implementable standpoint, the solutions to improving the existing paradigm and shift it in a manner that will bring forward the anticipated results for the AF CTFE. So our panel of distinguished persons here will be discussing various elements of this, and we'll also invite at an appropriate time interventions from the floor to help us with comments and questions that would help to elaborate on these. So the questions essentially are these. What should new investment strategies look like? Consider traditional FDIs, current FDI, and new shifts under AFTA. How could AFTA most effectively impact intra-African investment? How would AFTA impact bilateral cooperation investments and FDIs from industrialized countries? 
how do we ensure bankability without curtailing practices and stringent conditions? Should Africa develop its own metrics relating to credit rating and ease of doing business indexing systems? In what ways do we ensure job creation, technology transfer, and trade and export for finished products? How can African tertiary institutions position themselves to produce the skill sets needed to drive the transformation? How should the landscape for foreign development finance look like with the role of AFTA? What are the potentials for foreign direct investments under AFTA? How will AFTA affect investments in intermediary and final trade? And then we invited our panel to comment on how host governments, good governance and investment climates will determine the direction of investment flows and on multilateral and bilateral agencies in supporting and investing in Africa under AFTEC, looking particularly at some of the already established institutions that we have and how their roles have been in the development of our continent. And we'll also address questions pertaining to academia and what role academia could play in setting appropriate boundaries for this. Now we have our list of distinguished speakers on this panel, but in keeping with the spirit of yesterday, International Women's Day, I will ask the indulgence of colleagues on the panel to allow us to have the only lady on our panel present first her thoughts on certain aspects of the various questions that have been put forward. And that is Treasure Mafanga. Ms. Mafanga was the first female appointed to serve as CEO in the Federation of Swaziland Employers and Chamber of Commerce. And she was chief of the Office for Africa of the International Trade Center, which is, as you know, a joint agency of the WTO and the United Nations based in Geneva a position she held from 2008 to 2011. She was Director for Trade and Industry at the AAU, responsible for trade, industry, customs, and mineral resources, as well as for AFTA negotiations and the African Union Commodity Strategy. She has served and is serving now as a strategic advisor to the Kingdom of Eswatini on various continental initiatives, including AFTA. It's my pleasure to invite her to make a brief intervention. And that will be followed by the Honorable Dr. Kande Yamkela, who I will introduce appropriately. Thank you, Councillor Cooper, for um, that uh, very kind introduction. Um, may I, first of all, just thank the organizers for inviting me. I'm representing the African Electronic Trade Group as Executive Director and Acting COO at the moment. I'm in the Kingdom of Eswatini and very honored to be given the first slot to speak um, by virtue of my um, gender. Now, I'd like to say that what a distinguished panel that I'm a part of, and I thought that I would share some perspectives on the issues relating to mobilizing investments um, at this time in Africa, a very special moment given the whole process of um, moving forward on phase two in terms of defining the rules around investment and the investment land as well as I think the very um, great excitement by the African private sector, uh, large and small businesses about what opportunities are going to be unlocked. Um, I thought that the way I would like to uh, target my response to this question is that there is no doubt that um, there is a lot of optimism about the opportunities in the market. And I believe that um, throughout this uh, uh, summit, uh, private sector summit, we will hear different ideas around.
this enormous opportunity. And I want to zoom in, uh, uh, if you may allow me, on this issue of job creation. And um, the, because we, we know that this is, in fact, maybe the elephant in the room question on our continent right now. We are all very much aware of the demographics of the continent, a very youthful con continent. And what we have actually, um, what has been often referred to as a ticking time bomb. Uh, which was before COVID-19. As of last year, 2020, um, the AU has published a report with ECA reporting that we probably lost an additional 20 million formal sector jobs. But now what we also have is a, is a continent that has been stabilizing a lot of development in terms of uh, macroeconomic and fiscal discipline has been uh, taking hold. There is a lot of optimism about this environment, but sadly a phenomenon of largely jobless growth. So what are we going to do about this? And uh, what, what are the opportunities that we can unlock um, that are basically accelerated or inspired by the AFCFTA? Now, what I want to do is just take you a little bit under the bonnet of our economy on the continent. We all know that our statistics do not cover um, the huge, um, you know, um, economic activity that is happening in the informal sector. A study that was done by McKinsey and uh, AUDA NEPAD, which is one of our partners in 2020, uh, basically trying to understand better what were the impacts, the early impacts of COVID-19 on the small businesses um, across the continent, found that there are about 95, 96 million micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. And only about 8% of them are actually SMEs in terms of um, a very broad definition of this um, particular group. As you know, the continent doesn't have a standard definition for small and medium-sized enterprises, and this is really the first point in terms of policy. Um, but we want to appreciate that the African Union has actually entered the fray of stakeholders who are looking at promoting the sector, and there is a strategy uh, which has been worked on together with the um, uh, regional economic communities to look deeper in what could be done in this area. But what I wanted to say to you is that the findings are that this sector as we may call it informal is actually the core job creator um, out of about you know um, you know it, you know in terms of if you look at the landscape about 66 million formal sector jobs are basically coming from multinational corporations about 60 million from um, the public sector. This is the civil service. And about you know, 360 million are coming from the MSMEs. Very fragile jobs, admittedly, but I think for us as the A-Trade Group, this is where we need to start. And we believe that the AFCFTA creates an opportunity for us to leverage technologies to connect small businesses, to trade with each other across this uh, vast continent of ours. And we very much appreciate that a lot of uh, focus has been on investments in infrastructure. And we agree that our infrastructure is not adequate fully. However, we believe that the, um, it, it's a, you know, the, the approach that we should take is look, looking at how we can create a business case for these investments that we want to see in infrastructure. Um, because what we uh, basically are seeing is a lot of emphasis on roads, on airports, on hotels, etc., which is important. But I think we also want to see the capacity building, the investments in human capital. And this is where I believe the institutions of higher learning are playing an important role. But I will say in a moment what I think could be done better um, in terms of the ecosystem that we see for supporting M MSMEs. We we also want to see um, greater investment in health and education, even at the basic level, because the world has changed. We're talking about, you know, the fourth industrial revolution, and you find that our curricula is very much still uh, stuck in the past. Um, the education sector has not really transformed and changed that much in the past 100 years. So we see opportunities for that, and we believe that the private sector could be the catalyst for calling for what it is that they actually need from these institutions which are investing a great deal in human capital development. We also think 
think that the boosting it, digital infrastructure is key. Um, we know that this, of course, would have to come with energy, um, you know, projects, and there are a number of uh, significant plans that a number of countries have. We also have the Grand Inga Dam as a flagship initiative of the AU. Um, but we also believe that, you know, the importance of uh, changing our mindset and looking at renewable energies. And I know that there are going to be panelists in the, you know, who can speak more eloquently to this area. But what we see is that this is the moment where we can basically put greater emphasis on those areas. I also want to talk about the Pan-African quality infrastructure. This is another aspect of infrastructure in, in development, which often gets uh, put by the wayside. But if we are going to industrialize at the scale that we want, and we're going to have quality products made in Africa products, they need to be um, basically, uh, we need an ecosystem to support the SMEs. And every country has um, institutions that have been established in this area. But I think there's a serious underinvestment in those institutions in terms of their ability to serve the um, SME sector, as well as um, the rest of the business community. Now, I want to just say that um, when it comes to capacity building and what we want to see, um, especially for the entrepreneurs who are really the, you know, the, the drivers of the change that we want to see in the AFCFTA, is um, yes, def definitely digital uh, literacy is important, but what we have found as the A-Trade Group from our research is that what is key is really changing the mindset. Changing the mindset from the traditional kind of uh, baseline targets that we tend to see towards a more ambitious um, and definitive mindset that basically is going to leapfrog and make these businesses have sustainable growth and also to be competitive within the continent and globally as well. Um, we want to appreciate that a lot of development partners, governments and stakeholders have invested um, in, in the um, you know, SME sector, but we are sadly not seeing really the sustainable growth. We're not seeing the um, emergence of so many uh, large companies because every company starts small. Um, we're not seeing that growth. And so as the A-Trade Group, we are basically reaching out and creating a, a web of partnerships across the continent with business associations, with government entities, to basically reconfigure and revisit how this SME ecosystem can be strengthened. And we have an open approach, and that's why I'm so glad to be speaking today, because we believe that being coordinated by the institutions that have a mandate for this um, at the African Union and at the regional level is excellent. But what we really need is the push that comes from the private sector that brings um, basically the ideas, that brings the uh, technology and know-how, that brings also the experience. And here I want to make a special mention of the diaspora because um, we are a diaspora-led initiative and I don't think we have really harnessed um, that, you know, positive input sufficiently in all the countries. I know some countries on the continent have created enabling policies that are welcoming uh, for diaspora knowledge skills investments to be brought in to be part of the development uh, process. But I think some countries are, you know, sort of following behind. And I think this is a, a very important opportunity that we should be looking at together. And this platform, I think, is an excellent expression of what can be done when we, we join forces together as Africans. Now, I want to just speak uh, finally about something concrete that you know may explain what I'm talking to you about. And that is that when we saw the emerging landscape and the move towards consolidating um, an African market, the African Electronic Trade Group um, decided to um, basically launch to, at the market an Af a Pan-African e-commerce platform called Sokoku. Sokoku Africa was named for that by the African Union. And I think my brothers and sisters from uh, East Africa will know that in this Swahili, this means large market, central market. It also means unity. So what we're doing through this initiative is basically saying uh, all other regions have been able to come up with their large uh, 
platforms. Um, you know, we can quote some of the ones from the US and from China. What about Africa? So we basically are bringing forward Sokoko.Africa in a partnership and, you know, with um, what we call a shared prosperity model. So it's a different business model. It's one that is exciting. It's one also where a lot of our focus is actually on inclusiveness, especially the women entrepreneurs and the youth entrepreneurs. It's inclusive of all sectors and the various regional value chains. And in fact, as part of our um, concrete um, commitment to um, the, the importance of celebrating Africa Women's Day, we had an announcement by our CEO and chairman yesterday that we are um, basically going out to sponsor 10,000 SMEs that are women owned to register for free in our platform. Our platform is designed for SMEs, so it is generally affordable. However, with COVID-19, we're all conscious that any support to get started will make a difference. So this is something I just wanted to share with you and to also say that for youth, we have a, an, a program where we are sponsoring 150 youth startups to attend the second Intra-African Trade Fair in Kigali later this year. This is a partnership that we have with the African Union, and we are very pleased to be able to basically announce that we have this competition for youth startups that we are running. I will share the details in our chat if anyone's interested. But the most important thing is investing in women, investing in youth, providing the platforms for us all to work together to build the kind of transparency that we want to see in the marketplace, to bring trade information, to trade using local currencies, to have basically the best you know, logistics and uh, infrastructure that can move um, the, the goods around the continent. So I want to pause there by just saying that I'm excited to be part of this conversation. And being a private sector summit, I think we really should be talking about concrete examples um, you know, that we can put on the table, that we can all support to move the um, investment uh, agenda forward, which is basically about impact investment, uh, patient capital, looking long term and working together to create the kind of environment that will basically spur job, job, um, uh, job, uh, sorry, job creation, employment opportunities for as many African citizens as we can. I thank you for the opportunity uh, to just share some thoughts, but I am um, here to learn as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Madam. The intervention you've made is very pertinent and I like the direction that you headed in and it's consistent with how we think that we should proceed during these discussions to come up with concrete ideas and suggestions that could help us reach the targets that we've been set.